welcome back. We are working through more problems on the uh, the mock exam for the chapters 1 and 2 exam. I've gone through questions 1 through 16 in separate videos. We're on questions 17 and 18 now. Question 17, construct equations of two perpendicular lines which intersect at the point negative 10, 1. Your equations must be in point slope, slope intercept, or standard form. Okay. This one's wide open. This one is just wide open. Uh, it doesn't give you any any requirements on on the slopes at all. They must be in point slope, slope intercept, or standard form. Well, that's all of them. So okay, there's really easy solutions to this. There's less easy solutions to this, but there's really easy solutions to this one. Let's look at those. You don't need to graph them. You just need the equations, but I'm going gonna, gonna to graph them for you. Because this is really, really easy. Negative 10, 1. So let's say this is negative 10, and this is 1. So here's this point. We just need to make sure that we give two lines that are perpendicular and intersect at that point. So I'm going to pick this line and this line. A vertical line, although maybe that's a little tilted. A vertical line and a horizontal line. This one is x equals negative 10, right? That's a vertical line that crosses the x-axis at negative 10. It definitely goes through the point negative 10, 1. Okay? And this one is y equals 1. These are both in standard form, so these two equations work. x equals negative 10, y equals 1, we're done. A vertical line is perpendicular to a horizontal line. What would you do if you didn't have such an easy question like this? You need to make sure that the slope of one line is equal to the opposite reciprocal of the slope of the second line. If this is true, then both are perpendicular. Okay, then they're both perpendicular. Okay, and then I would suggest if you know an intersection point, go ahead and use point slope form and then just put the intersection point xy here and then put your slope right there and that gives you the equation to the line uh, for one of them and then if you just switch this to an m2 using the same intersection point, you've got yourself the second equation. It doesn't need to be that difficult. Um, there's a couple variations on this problem, of course, where you're, you're not given the intersection point, you're just given some random point, and the equation to some other line. Well, first, find the perpendicular slope, then use point-slope form to give the equation of the line, which is perpendicular. Okay. Question 18, find the domain and range of the function. All right, let's start with domain. The domain, oh boy. Let's look underneath this radical first. Is there anything, any x's, any real numbers that we can't plug in underneath here because we violate some rule? The answer is no. We can plug in any real number because whenever we square it, we're gonna get a positive number, and then when we add four, we're gonna get another more positive number. 
so the domain is all reals. I'll use this fancy R to say all reals. Um, how about the range? Let's think about how small we can make this, and we'll think about how big we can make this. We know this is a continuous function. We could draw it without picking up our pencil. We would just, you know, plot a bunch of points and figure out where where to draw that line. Okay. So how small can we make it? Well, the square root is smallest. The square root function is smallest when you're taking the square root of zero, right? <laughs> you can't get anything less than zero if you're dealing with real numbers. But we can't quite get zero, can we? So we're going to try and get this argument as close to zero as we can. And the closest we can get it is four. All right, we plug in zero and we get four. We can't make the argument of the radical less than four because we always get a non-negative number when we square real number. So the smallest we can make this is 2. So that's the minimum. Now how big could we make it? There's no limit. We can make this as big as we want. We just got to keep plugging in bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger numbers to x. There's no limit. So infinity is sort of our max. We can make it as big as we want. So the range, because this is the square root function is pretty nicely behaved, it, it, it starts and then just keeps going up like this. The range is 2 to infinity. Okay. If you had a graphing utility, you, you could just read this off the graphing calculator. You could just You'd, you'd see the lowest height it takes is 2, and you'd see that it, it shoots off to infinity. So the range would be pretty simple to, to sort of just read off the graph. Okay, and that's it. So I will see you for the next video where we go through questions 19 and 20 probably. Okay, I hope that helped.